What's in your pockets? Adapters, obviously. Ah, yes. Adapt or die, that's my motto. That is until I have my contacts Zeiss lenses fully modded for video. And one of my favorite mods is the dedicated EF mount. The only lens in my contact set that hasn't been EF modded is my 21 millimeter, which I'm going to do today, along with three other lenses. And believe me when I say, if I can do it, you can do it. So let's talk about it. This is so easy. Hey everybody, today we're talking about SIM mount EF conversion kits. And what these kits allow you to do is convert your native lens mount to dedicated EF mounts for a more seamless and secure connection to any EF mount camera. Now the EF connection sits directly on top of the native camera mount, so installation is relatively easy without compromising the overall integrity of your lens. Now remember, there is no removal of your native mount required to convert to EF using the SIM mount system. Now currently EF conversion kits are available for the following lenses. The Olympus Zuko OM, Leica R, Contact Zeiss, both the AE and MM variants, Contact Zeiss zoom lenses, and Nikon F, AI, AIS, ZF, and ZF2, plus the Milvis and Otis lenses. Yes, the lens conversion kit allows for infinity focus on the mounts offered. SIM mount EF conversion kits are precision machined to meet EF OEM flange distances, therefore allowing full infinity focus. However, if your lens is out of calibration while in its native state, for example, if your FD lens cannot reach infinity when mounted to an FD camera body, your lens will still remain out of calibration when converted to EF mounts. So please check to make sure your lens is able to reach infinity before calibration. If it does not, you will need to adjust infinity on your lens. Now inside the kit, the following items are included. The EF SIM mount, mounting screws, instruction card, and the appropriate screwdriver. Now, the biggest challenge when applying the EF mounts is stripping the screws on the back of your lens. Now, depending on the condition and age of your lens, some screws come undone very easily, while others are a bit more stubborn. When the lenses were assembled some 30 to 40 years ago, the manufacturers used what is now called thread lock to make sure that the screws do not come loose over time. Now, this thread lock becomes super strong, thus making it very difficult to turn and loosen. Now, heat is the one proven method to break the bond of the thread lock glue. Using a heat gun with a very narrow tip or soldering iron, preheat the screws for a long period of time, upwards of 10 minutes per screw. This should allow them to come undone much easier. For Leica, you can use a standard Phillips screwdriver. For Japanese lenses such as contacts and Nikon, please use a Japanese industrial standard screwdriver. But don't worry, these kits come with the appropriate screwdriver for your lens mount, so that's one less thing you have to worry about. Make sure that you focus your lens to infinity before moving any screws. You don't want to damage the helicoid thread of the lens. For Leica R, remove five of the six native screws. A good technique to avoid stripping the screws is to apply firm downward pressure and twist. If the screw doesn't pop loose, you might want to use the heating technique I mentioned earlier. Leave one screw in to hold the native mount in place. Do not remove the native mount. Place the SIM mount on top of the native mount and align the holes accordingly. Using the supplied screws, tighten down the mount. If you turn and position the SIM mount logo by a few holes, you can mount the lens cine side, having the markings point sideways. Remove the three screws and do not remove the native mount. Place a base plate on top of the native mount. And using the supplied three screws, tighten the base plate. Once the base plate is mounted, place the SIM mount on top of the base plate and use the supplied screws to tighten. So 
So for contacts, remove the four native screws. Do not remove the native mount. Place the SIM mount on top of the native mount, line up the screw holes, and tighten using the supplied screws. Now I should say that I didn't have any issue with stripping the screws with any of these four lenses. Remove the three screws. Do not remove the native mount. For Olympus, we must first put the small tab against the aperture actuator of the lens. Push the actuator clockwise forward until the holes align. If you don't align the notch with the aperture actuator, you will not have manual aperture control on the Olympus lens. And tighten using the supplied screws. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you install SIM mounts to your lenses. Simple, right? Now I should also mention that just as easily as these mounts are to install, they're equally as easy to uninstall, returning your lens back to its original mount. This lens is made actually kind of locally and I am so gonna test this thing out.